underwriting deals is such a major pain point for people. Most don't want to do it, and the people that are good at it are few and far between. That is why after six years of being in the industry and buying over 1,200 apartments using my best-selling multifamily deal analyzer, I created Real Estate Lab, a full suite acquisition software for multifamily investors. We have built a product that helps investors automate their acquisitions and close more deals all in a cloud-based platform. You can go to realestatelab.com and sign up today using the promo code TAG2 for 10% off your first 12 months. This is David Tupin. Thanks for listening. Welcome to The Apartment Gurus, where twice a week, host Tate Seymour brings you deep dive interviews with the wisest gurus in the apartment investing industry. These experts are sure to create game-changing value and inspiration designed to catapult your business to the next level. Be sure to reach out to Tate at www.investwithgreenlight.com for access to his investor portal and Calendly link. And now, here is Tate Seymour and the Apartment Gurus. Welcome, everybody, back to another episode of the Apartment Gurus podcast today. And really excited for this episode today. Uh, I've got a, a, a entrepreneur in the space that's uh, killing it in a lot of different aspects, um, both on his, in his own business and also as a thought leader and, and coach and, uh, and Facebook uh, you know, presence and social media guru and all that stuff. Can't think of any other way to to introduce you, Tim. But you've got a lot going on. Uh, Tim Vitali is with us today, and uh, Tim grew up in Bridgeport, Connecticut, and lives in Wilmington, North Carolina. Now, beautiful place. Uh, he's he was the assistant VP of finance for a Fortune 500 insurance company. Uh, also worked as, for a brief time on Wall Street, and uh, his his family. Is a as a real estate family, uh, and so he grew up in real estate, uh, owning lots of small multifamily and and mixed use buildings, um, and then he started in t- 2019 on it on his own uh, with a one single family house. That sounds familiar. A lot of us started that way, and uh, really learned about the income based approach, um, and uh, got him into into uh, commercial real estate. And what that is referring to is that the valuation process of commercial versus uh, residential, uh, which is one of the things I love about commercial. It's it's based on income, and uh, your your values one hundred percent based on income as opposed to uh, an appraisal, which is how residential is valued, a single family through fourplexes. So, um, so yeah, in twenty twenty he. Uh, dove into the apartment space and in 2021 in August 2021 uh he got he did his first deal so here pretty recently um so you know really he, he's been on a tear with uh he's got 83 million in assets under management uh in the, both owned and in the pipe um that he'll he'll be at that number by the end of the year uh, also, big time into boating and uh, beach and ocean life, including fishing, surfing, snorkeling. You, are you a good surfer? Uh, I'm all right. I like to get yeah. out there on the board. <laughs> yeah, that's cool. That's it's a tough sport. I've 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 delved. I've taken a few lessons and whatnot. Um, but uh, he's he's into trucks and muscle cars, uh, guns, golf, uh, smoking meat, <laughs> and brewing his own beer. Uh, I, I brewed beer for a while too. That's awesome. Uh, he has a dog named Miller. It's an 85 pound golden retriever. That's a big dog. And he's been married, uh, since 2018 to his wife, Danielle, and they do not have any kids yet. Uh, emphasis on the yet, Tim, it sounds like. Yep. Yep. Cool. Um, so Tim, I'm super stoked to have you on the show, uh, and really looking forward to this conversation. Nate, thanks so much for having me, man. You know, yeah. big fan of what you guys are doing on social media and the Greenlight Group. Uh, have been following you since you guys started that company more recently. I mean, what's it been like? Maybe less than a year now. I think Greenlight's been around. We we've been around actually for about four years, but in the in the podcast, been around about two and a half years. But um, we you know we are 
we started doing our deals about a year before you did. Um, oh, right. Our okay. first deal. So, um, yeah, my timeline's a little messed up. That's all right. Yeah, no worries. So, um, so, so, dude, impressive bio, exciting stuff going on. I love how, uh, you know, your, your trip into the apartment space has been, uh, you know, recent. So, you know, it's, it's all very fresh and we're going to get to talk about, uh, a, a, you know, a number of aspects of what it takes to do your first deal and, and start to scale up and you're scaling fast, man. I mean, you're going to be close to a hundred million here in what a year or so, like a year and a half, mm-hmm. um, yeah, about 14 months or so. Yeah. I mean, you know, we got to 50 million in 18 months. So that's impressive. Um, so Tim share with us a little bit, uh, more about kind of your, your background, uh, your story, and really, you know, how you got to where you are today. Yeah, man, I mean, you hit on a lot of great points there uh, with with the bio. Um, let me just kind of dive into it a little bit more. Uh, so, yeah, I, I worked on Wall Street for a while. You know, big financial accounting guy. Uh, I worked my way up to assistant VP of finance, and my goal was that I wanted to be CFO of my company by the time I was thirty five. Uh, I was the youngest person to ever get assistant VP title. In that mm-hmm. Fortune 500 company, uh, I was 28 years old when I did that, and uh, I realized that I was hitting the ceiling. And I was like, "Wait a second, I'm I'm not going to be able to make more money this way." So then, started getting into real estate, bought one single family house, got burned on the appraisal, and the conversation with the with the mortgage and loan officer was like, "Well, how can we can't use this number, which was the income based approach, which was what I thought it should have appraised for?" Right. And he was like, "No, no, no, only five units and up, and and that depends on the income." And I was like, "But this is an income producing property; it's an investment." Yeah. And he goes, yeah. "I get it, but it doesn't work that way." So I started looking into commercial real estate, and I read David Lindell's Multifamily Millions book, and that was kind of like the catalyst book for me to get into commercial side of things. Mm-hmm. And it just really suited me, like with with the accounting and finance background. Like numbers make sense to me at the end of the day. Yeah, I have a different understanding of how they work, why they work together. I can look at something and spot it pretty quickly. Very good at asset management because of that. Um, You know, managing a team of people when I worked my W-2 life, asking difficult questions and motivating people. So, you know, asset management comes fairly naturally to me as well. Uh, Reviewing financials and things. It's just, it's it's great. Mm -hmm. Um, Yeah, so I lived in Manhattan for a couple of years after growing up in Connecticut. I went to school here in in Wilmington, North Carolina at UNCW. Moved to Charlotte in 2015 after we left Manhattan and uh, continued working remotely for that company in Manhattan from Charlotte. And when we, when I quit my full-time job, I moved from Charlotte back to Wilmington because I didn't have to be at an office anymore. So I wanted to be back at the beach, right? Yeah, I, I yeah. love the ocean. I love boating and fishing. Like anything laid back beach lifestyle is totally my 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 shtick. Uh, you know, getting all fancied up is is not what I'm into and. You know, I want to be that billionaire that shows up in a tank top and board shorts and flip flops to everything because I Love can't, it. you know, yeah. that's that's kind of like where where my mindset lies with that. Um, so, yeah, so we, I did my first deal. I closed my very first deal uh, that I was asked to be a partner in. Uh, it was actually Friday, August 13th of last year. So about we're recording this uh, August 10th. So a couple of days away from being into this for full 12 months. And since then. You know, I've quit my full time job. You know, we've closed on purchase price. This is not, I, I don't know. Somebody, I was having this conversation with somebody who's like, you know, how many doors do you have kind of yep. conversation? But it's like, you know, do you measure your assets under management by purchase transaction volume or by stabilized value? And um, mine is on, yeah. uh, I like to, I like to look at it as purchase, tr- purchase price instead yeah. of stabilized value. Yeah. So, we would have, uh, so with all the deals that we have currently done and that we have under contract, it will bring us up to, uh, bring me up to $83 million worth of purchase transaction volume in 14 months or something like that, for give or take, right? Yeah. Um, you know, we got about $63 million under contract right now wow. that we're raising money on and, and we're closing four deals this month. Got two deals closing in September, one October and one in November. So we got a ton of stuff kind of piling up because it was a little bit of a lull there when we were having all the rates change and the Fed change and all that other kind of stuff. But yeah. essentially, you know, I just I went, you know, both feet in, sold my house in Charlotte, North Carolina to live off the equity that had built up in order to give myself a runway to go full time into real estate. And yeah, I mean, that was that was really hard for me. That was like one of the most difficult decisions 
we I ever had to do because I got into financial work because I wanted that stability of a paycheck. And yeah, but I also knew I wanted the growth, right? I wanted to have my cake and eat it too. And you know, I was 31 when I quit my job. I just turned 32 like a week ago. So uh, you know, I'm I'm blessed and I'm grateful that I figured this out early on in my life comparative to a lot yeah. of other people then in totally. the industry. Totally. And I'm just getting started, man. I mean, we got so much stuff going on and I got a big vision and I love helping people and, and providing value to the community. And I absolutely love what I do. That's so cool. Yeah. I mean, a, a number of things to kind of unpack there. Uh, number one, you, you, you're uh, not to date myself, but you're, let's see, 17, 18 years ahead of me as far as your, uh, the, you know, how, when you got into it and uh, yeah. really started, started growing and blossoming. But uh, so you're right. You're like, in the grand scheme of things, you're, you're, you're very young and that, um, that bodes really well for, for your future and, and, uh, you know, lots of time to, to, to be highly, highly successful. Um, I, I always look in the conversation for that moment that kind of like the, the light bulb moment where, uh, you saw the opportunity in multifamily and as a result of something, that uh you that basically got you to take the leap and you know in your case it was going in the single family space um so many of us started there or you know have done single family investing and seeing the limitations and almost the riskiness of uh of the single family space uh where your value you know valuation alone it's speculative, right? Like mm -hmm. you don't know where that value is going to land and that can be make it or break it. Um, mm -hmm. And so, you know, you saw that limitation or that, that element of the single family space and, and you already knew about income based valuation. So, you know, you're like, why didn't this, why wasn't this based on income? Like it's, it's a, it's a rental property. Like, and and so, and you realize there that like, you got to be in commercial for that to work that way. Um, and you know, your, your mortgage, uh, your mortgage officer kind of helped you with that process, but that's, it sounds like that was kind of your, your pivotal moment that really kind of pointed you towards the commercial space. Is that, is that pretty much accurate? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I, you know, growing up in the family that I did, we own, they own, my family owns a ton of stuff up in Connecticut, uh, okay. mostly mixed use you know, a couple, you know, maybe four or five, six units up top and then two or three retail spaces on the bottom. So I understood it. And I, under, you know, I knew I always wanted to be in multifamily because, you know, it made sense that if you had two units and one goes vacant, the mortgage is still paid. Yeah. Right. And so the principles were there, it, but the scale, I didn't understand and grasp the scale of commercial real estate until I started to build my network and really start to see the power of leverage of everyone else's skill sets and traits mm, yeah. that I could collectively put together a group or a team in order to get something done. Because remember, when I first started, I was fairly young compared to a lot of people. And I didn't have any money. I was still paying off student loans. Mm. I didn't have any deals because I, I really actually I'm not very good at finding deals. And I didn't have any experience. Yeah. But, you know, with dedication and grit and keeping with it and providing value to other people, opportunity came my way. My way. Yeah. And then I capitalized on that opportunity and I just went full bore. And I was like, I knew in my W2 life, my boss always told me I was the most valuable, the best hire person she's ever made in her career. And she had been doing this for 35 years, right? Wow. Yeah. I knew that I was always an overachiever. I set high goals. I take action. I'm a fire ready aim kind of guy, yeah. but I follow through on what I say I'm going to do. And I just needed that start. I needed that leg up and I needed to get connected with the right people in order to bring that value to the commercial space. And now that I've done that, now I'm the lead managing member of most of these deals that we're putting together because I have that leadership trait and those roles just come more naturally to me. And I'm, you know, born leader, right? And I don't want yeah. to toot my own horn, but some people know that. They know if they're they're the ones that yeah. want to be the, the head of the ship or that they right. don't want to be the head of the ship. I do. I yeah. like that control. I like inspiring people. I like the comp like I I bring a level of confidence um, that yeah. helps inspire other people to follow in the same vision that I have. 
Uh, so, you know, being able to identify something like that is one of the most important things that you can do. And you're actually doing everyone a disservice if you don't, because yeah. everyone Good can point. benefit from a strong leader and everyone can benefit from a clear vision and confidence to move forward. Yeah. Great points. And, you know, I, that was something else I was going to comment on from your intro. You went into the W2 space uh, for the security of income you know, paycheck. And, uh, but you found that, you know, for you, you, it didn't really, it wasn't a good fit. And it, and it's because I, I always talk about the way that entrepreneurs are just kind of wired differently. And, and, uh, I, you know, I, I see that in myself where you can't not be the owner, right? Like that's, right. that's the mentality. And, um, and you, you got to, really be not only working for yourself, but also leading a team and, and, you know, leading a process forward. Um, and look, there's, there's employee mentalities in the world and there's owner mentalities in the world and there's nothing wrong with either one. Uh, and mm -mm. the the world needs great employees and, and great, um, soldiers, so to speak. And, uh, so like, you know, for listeners, chances are you're one of us, you're, you're wired as an entrepreneur, you wouldn't be seeking this out and listening to it. But, um, you know, another takeaway for listeners is how many of you can relate to where Tim is or where Tim was with no deals, no money, no partners, uh, no, no leads, like starting really from scratch, Tim took the who, not how approach and started surrounding himself with the key players that it would take to get this business done. He recognized his, it recognized his own limitations, number one, and, and also recognize what I like to call superpowers, uh, which, you know, in Tim's case is leadership, inspiration, uh, guidance, uh, vision, those, and, and I can relate, man, those are kind of mine, right? The, right there. And, uh, you know, that's, it's so key to know yourself, know what your strengths are, know what you're wired for, uh, because this is a team, a team approach, right? It's a team sport. And, uh, and, you know, Tim's a great example of somebody that, that took his superpowers and doubled down on them and then surrounded himself with people that made up the differences in what he didn't have. And that it has to be your approach to this business because you're never going to have everything you need in this business. Single family, you can do it. Like, you can you can be the solopreneur and and get single family done, but man, the multifamily these deals are big. There, uh, there's a lot to them. There's a lot of moving parts, and you you got to have an expert, really in all areas of 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 your business uh, that is making sure that you don't make mistakes. That you're uh, that you're you know you're doing you're implementing a good business plan. Um, and you're doing all the things that it takes to be successful. So dude, congratulate. First of all, just congratulations on, um, you know, your path, your trajectory and, uh, where you've been able to get to, you know, you're, you're, you now have a Facebook group that, uh, meets every week, right? Yeah. Thanks, man. Thanks. I appreciate it. You know, it was, uh, the classic success in overnight success, right? Yeah. It was, uh, you know, 18 months or, you know, that part of two years building my network, building my relationships, building the foundational blocks to build this empire off of. And it's, yeah. it's, it's all who, not how, um, yeah. funny thing is we actually sent, we, we, we run a coaching group, me and my partner, Tim Vest, uh, we run a coaching group. And when we bring on new students that's the that's the book that we send to them which said this made such a monumental impact in my life that if you don't have this book you need to read it and if you do yeah. have it please give this to somebody else and yeah. do them as you know be a go-giver right go yeah. out there and, and and provide value to the world with no expectation of return and uh yeah so we have a facebook group uh making moves real estate community we have a coaching program uh, we only take on five students at a time uh we wanted to create something a little a little different, right? So we wanted to be able to uh, really just have conversations with people because you can do every single course in the world and read every book in the world. But like the most value that you get out of any mentor, I think is just the face-to-face -face time that you have with them. You just yeah. you have a discussion of where you currently are, what your understanding is. And then you, 
And then somebody that's been in your shoes understands where you're coming from can say, I understand where you are. Here's where you need to kind of course correct. And here's why. And we talk about conceptual stuff, which is really the crux of the whole thing is people get stuck on the things that they don't understand. Well, if you had somebody to talk to, you could work through that through conversation. So Mm -hmm. my coaching pro, I don't have anything to give you except for my time. And that's the most valuable thing. Right. Uh, So that's, that's why we do it the way that we do it. There's no coursework. There's no nothing, but we, we, you know, we go through the A to Z of like buying properties, building networks, building relationships, how to underwrite deals is like the biggest thing that I, I harp on. Cause that's obviously one of my greatest strengths is structuring deals and underwriting underwriting them. And then, you know, how do you raise money from investors? Like we talk about that. It's like, you know, we just had our last class on Monday and uh, that was the last, the last thing that we talked about was like, okay, well now you guys are, you know, through this and you understand how everything works. Like pitch me your deal. And I was like, I want you to fail right now and not fail when you need to be successful. Mm -hmm. So this is the time that you should practice. And I'm going to listen to your pitch and I'm going to provide you feedback from one coach's perspective. I'm also an investor and I've done this myself, right? So like I can provide you a lot of value and a lot of feedback because one day you're going to come across this deal that you're like, I need this money, but you can't seem like you, you know, you need it, right? It's always like the double-edged sword, but yeah, I mean, I love the, you know, the coaching program and in the Facebook group, the free Facebook group on, on Facebook, duh. Uh, mm-hmm. You know, we do a, a Facebook live uh, through StreamYard every Tuesday at 10 a.m. Eastern time. It's Tim and Tim Tuesdays at 10. Uh, so we, you know, we have different operators on. We'll interview brokers, um, other operators, insurance guys, like, or we'll just talk about what's going on in our lives and what we're seeing in the market. And and it's really just sometimes it's just a business meeting between Tim and Tim and I. Mm-hmm. And we just talk about like, hey, what did we learn? What are we going to do differently? Um, what are what are some things that we're looking out for? What are some things that we found out recently that we thought were interesting? And you just, you know, just talking about stuff and and just providing value to people through transparency. Transparency and honesty are our number one and number two policies, right? So we just we live and die by that. And if you can't be transparent and honest, then then what are you doing? Yeah. Yeah. That's terrific. I love how you, you know, a lot of people in the thought leadership space um, feel like, or would that people that want to be in the thought leadership space feel like they've got to really go out and make a, a big, long track record of success before they can get started. And I love how you have, you know, in your first year of doing this have uh, number one, been rapidly successful. And, and then you've brought you're bringing other people along for the ride immediately with you. And there's no reason you can't do that because you're, you know, you're steps and steps ahead of those folks. And so you have the, um, the perspective of what it takes to do what you've just done, you know, available and ready to share. And, uh, you know, that's gotta be just, it sounds like you're just providing a tremendous value to, uh, you know, to folks that are, that are being influenced by you. There's nothing more fulfilling for me than to see other people win. Yeah. There is, you know, one of my mentors likes to say that wealth is like sunshine. We can both go outside and get a tan and my sunshine is not going to take away from yours. Yeah. And I I live and die by that. I li- I truly believe that. There are so many there's so much opportunity out there. There's so much opportunity, there's so much money, there's so many so much everything that yeah. there's no need to be greedy, right? And I would love to be able to help like when I get these messages from our coaching students that we significantly impacted their lives and changed the course of their family's direction, like what, like how could you not do something like that? Right. That's so huge. And if you can live your life and have impact on, on one person's life, if you can improve one person's life through your own leadership time and expertise, why wouldn't you? Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Why wouldn't you? And, and why the reason you, why you would is because it just feels good in my opinion. Like it feels great. Yeah. It's yeah. Honestly, like people ask, you know, Tim, what's your why? Like, why did you get, you know, what, what got you through the dark times of trying to get your first deal on anything? And honestly, for me, it was really the sense of fulfillment, like yeah. being able to set a goal or a target and accomplishing it. And then along the way, like, it's funny. My wife, she always makes, she always told me this before I got into this. She was like, 
Ben, I know that you want everybody to be included in this, but like, there's not enough room for everyone. And I have this mindset in real estate that is, come on, everybody, let's go. Like everybody get on the train. Like this is, this is great. You know, I want everybody to feel the same way that I feel. And I'm able to do that by helping investors invest their money in opportunities that they had no idea even existed. Like there's a couple of my investors that they write really big checks and mm. they were just like, oh, you know, I was going to put this money with a financial advisor and and be fine with my 5% a year on this and be done for the rest of my life. I was like, why? I mean, why? I mean, yeah. my most conservative estimates beat that like 3x, my conservative estimates. Imagine yeah. if we, uh, things go above and beyond and then their eyes light up and then I get text messages from them like, hey, Tim, thanks. I know that you're taking care of me. And I just, I really want to express my gratitude of what you're doing for me and my family by being able to provide that legacy wealth for them if, as an uh, as a passive investor. Like they don't want to deal with the tenants, toilets and trash, but they, they want to invest in these deals. And one of the biggest limiting beliefs that I had to come over was why would anybody invest in a deal passively when they could just go buy it themselves? Mm-hmm. And I just, I didn't understand. Right. Yeah, and then it's yeah. like, wow, you, you have this limiting belief of that, oh, if I don't have $50,000 in the bank, then nobody's got $50,000 in the bank. <clears throat> Wrong in a right. big way. Like one of the biggest problems is people having people needing places to put their money. And when right. you change your thought process around that and you're just like, wow, wow, that really is actually a problem. And, um, you know, I'm starting to see that myself. Really. You know, it's like, well, hey, I'm starting to come into a little bit of money here and I don't have anywhere to put it because my deals are full. And I don't really have, you know, I have a couple of different people that I would I would invest money with, but it's always relationship based. It's like, who do I trust yeah. with my money? And right. now I'm starting to realize how people could have money sitting in their checking account, not doing anything because they just don't know where to put it. And yeah. it's kind of, it's, it's interesting because, you know, it, it's kind of like the, my own internal mental growth right? Mm. It's, it's growing as an individual. And, um, one of the, another guy that I look up to, his name's Ben, um, humble Ben CEO. If everybody knows who's, who he is, um, he talks about how, if you want to 10 X your life, you need a 20 X yourself. And it's, mm. it's yeah. interesting to see the documentation along the way of how I'm 20 Xing myself and learning and grow, growing and developing and providing even more value to other people. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's great stuff. Um, so t- let's talk a little bit about, uh, you know, what you're doing now. Uh, you've got a lot under contract. Um, you've got like at least twice under contract, what you currently own. Um, first of all, like what's your model? Like, in other words, where are you doing deals? How are you sourcing them? Um, what, and what kind of asset class are you guys going after? Yeah, so we're nothing fancy, right? I've never recreated the wheel. I don't do anything that's out of the norm. I just build great relationships and I find good deals. And or I don't really find good deals. My partner, Tim Vest, has got all the broker relationships. But okay. yeah, we find all of our deals through brokers. Yeah. Um, I've only done like one or two that were direct to seller, um, you know, without a broker involved. A lot of the stuff that we do is off market with the broker. You know, it's not, you know, it, it hasn't been, there's no OM that's been made. So, you know, typically I tell a broker, if you've had the time to make an OM, I don't want to look at it because I know that it's already been passed over by at least 10 different groups. And if they didn't take it, it must not be a good deal. Um, Interesting. So, yeah, yeah we, we buy stuff in the Carolinas. Uh, you know, Tim Vest, my partner, is over in Charlotte. I'm in Wilmington. So he kind of canvasses the Columbia, South Carolina, Greenville, South Carolina, you know, Charlotte, Raleigh areas. And I kind of canvass the the you know, the Eastern seaboard, mm-hmm. uh, Wilmington, Jacksonville, Greenville, North Carolina, Charlotte, Somerville. Um, we buy some stuff, coastal Georgia near, near the greater Savannah MSA. Um, anything w- within like a four or five hour driving distance, uh, from, for either one of us. Yeah. All great markets in general, that area, that region is terrific region to be investing in. Uh, you know, the, the, the sun belt is you know, is, is great right now. Um, and that's part of it. So, um, and what, and what kind of properties are, you know, are are you doing class C value add? What, what are you looking at? BC value add, you know, I mean, 
you know, lighter the renovation, the better, you know, always looking for management plays. We've built really, really, really great relationships with property management company that we know, like, and trust. And we actually bring waves, like we'll cut them a piece of the GP equity actually for, for doing the property management. Oh man, what a great idea. That's a great yeah, idea. Man. Like, dude, I told you I'm a go giver and I fully believe that there's enough to go around for everybody. And if you incentivize people in the right way, then we all have a collective interest to do things properly. Yeah. And, uh, you know, it's, yeah, like, it's kind of like a double-edged sword where sometimes you, you want to be, and you probably should be greedy for yourself. But I found that the more that I give, the more I receive, because yeah. now this property management company, who do you think they bring all their deals to? Right. Right. They bring right. it to us. Right. Right. And they're like, Hey, we're, we're currently managing this. We know the seller wants to sell it, you know, here, make them an offer before it goes to anybody. Yeah. Um. And they they always get a slice of the deal. They have the opportunity to raise money for the deal, which increases their ownership. And you know, everybody wins, right? It's all about everyone winning. If you can create wins across the board, you're going to have a strong team that everyone has the same common interest in order to accomplish the same goal. That is such a great takeaway, right there. Um, you know, property managers like they can be awesome sources for deals. They have their finger on the pulse of all their properties and their owners, and they're going to know when somebody needs to move something and, mm -hmm. or, or they're going to know if a, a you know, if, if a property is distressed or undercapitalized, they're going to know about that. Yep. And, and to give them incentive to bring you that stuff, man, why didn't, why isn't everybody doing that? Net. That is such a great idea. One um, of the you, deals that we're closing later this month, man, literally one of the reasons was it's undercapitalized. They're like, hey, yeah. we know that these guys are undercapitalized. They're going to sell this deal in order to get out of it. Um, it's still a good deal. There's a lot of meat on the bone left. If you come in and recapitalize it, new partners, new debt, you could crush it on this deal. Boom. Yeah. Made an offer, got it on contract, closing it later this month. You know? Yeah. Um, you know, so that was I get that was a direct to seller deal that was amazing. But most of the stuff we get from brokers too. You know, I mean, we have like here's one thing. Everyone focuses on talking to every single broker. Wrong. Just make really great relationships like with two or three, because they will keep your pipeline so full that you have to start telling them no. Yeah. 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 I mean, there you go. That's that's money. Like this this is such a relational uh, game. It's not transactional like single family, and you want to be establishing really deep, uh, long lasting relationships with key players. Uh, have you guys ever considered cutting a broker in on your GP? We've been asked that a couple of times. Actually, one time I can think think of very specifically, but his deal requirements are are so strong that we're like this. This is not the relationship. This is not the partnership that I want to go into. Yeah. Um, okay. Very rarely do we get asked um, from a broker that they also want to be cut into the deal. Sometimes we do have uh, brokers invest as limited partners in the deal because they know that they don't want to operate deals, but they, you know, they have a problem, yeah. right? They close deals and they make huge commission checks and right. they don't know what to do with their money. Right. They see all the money that people are making in real estate, you know, as the operators and as partners, but they, they operate in a different lane. So if they can take their earnings, like their active earned income and invest it passively in real estate, even though it's in the same vehicle, like what, like you absolutely need to do that. You'll never stop. They just have a high paying job. You know, if they quit the job, they don't have any more money. So we do have brokers reach out that want to invest passively in our deals. Yep. There you go. I mean, opportunity for everybody, right? Like, like Tim everybody. said, win, win, like that is the game. And, uh, Man, this and what's kind of slapping me in the face is you're like the third or fourth uh, guess I've had in the last week or two that's that source properties through the property management and uh, you know it's basically I, I'm I'm gonna do two things. Number one, listeners, that's your assignment right now is to go out and have conversations with either your existing property managers or uh, powerful property managers in your market and get this conversation going because how many times. You know, th these guys never have people come to them and say, "Hey, if you find me a deal, we'll cut you in on the on the ownership." Like that is something that is going to really raise their eyebrows and and be like, mm -hmm. "Wow, that's a massive opportunity right there." I kind of yep. I love how you how you slid in there, like, and they have the opportunity to raise capital for the deal too. Like, you know, there you go. That's another win win. And uh, 
and that increases their ownership and makes makes your capital raise all that much less that you have to get done. And um, so, you know, again, these property managers, the big ones um, that that have lots of doors, uh, they're they're industry experts at you know at the highest level, and and they're certainly market and sub market experts. So, like, yeah, get that get out there and use those relationships. And so, you know, this week. Go out there and and network and talk to your property manager property managers about this idea. Um, so and then the other thing I'm the, the second thing I'm going to do is I'm going to do this myself. Like we you know we've got great property managers that are well resourced, well networked, and uh, you know this is this is something like it, it, there's a reason why everything happens, right? And it's this has been coming up over and over again uh, for a good reason. So I'm I'm excited about. Uh, about doing this. So takeaways, I mean, really actionable takeaways here. Um, so yeah, hopefully then, you're taking notes, listeners. Go ahead, Tim. Yeah. And then, you know, the other thing, you know, just to kind of dive into that a little bit more is like, you know, we didn't start cutting them into the equity day one, right? It was still like a dating period. We gave them a couple of properties to manage. We really yeah. loved working with them. You know, we've, we've been out to dinner multiple times. Like they've invited me to stay at their house. Like we just have like a really great relationship with each other. Like I mm -hmm. love doing business with them and they love doing business with us. We trust each other, right? They get the property management stuff done. They get the construction stuff done. I give them the budget and the KPIs. And I'm like, here, go, right? You own part of this deal. It's your requirement to make sure you hit these. You were going to hit them anyways, right? But now you have another incentive to also hit them is because, you know, you're also going to make most likely six figures on the exit on the back end too, on top of what you're making. And then, you know, not for nothing, it also gives us a little bit of a discount because they're like, oh, since we're partners in this deal, we'll cut the property management fees or we'll cut this or we'll cut that or whatever. And then everybody wins. Again, it, this whole theme about everybody winning. And, you know, so I also wanted to touch on how I, you know, you have the opportunity to raise money. It's like, well, everyone has the opportunity to raise money once you get into a deal. And now that we have the real relationship with these people, it's like, okay, well, you guys can also raise money because I know you know a ton of people that want to invest money. So you can own, increase your ownership there. And then we got so many deals under contract. Do you think I have the liquidity to do every single deal? No. So if I have more partners that have liquidity, they'll write the earnest money check and the due diligence costs and things like that. And then they increase their ownership that way. How do you think we can have eight deals under contract for 80, you know, $63 million? I don't have you know, 1% of $600,000 deployed right now into different deposit, you know, earnest money checks and things like that is you spread it out across the team. Everybody wins. Like some deals you have more involvement, other deals you have less involvement. Sometimes you're writing the check. Sometimes you're not. It doesn't matter. The biggest thing that you need to do is get the deal done and get the deal closed. You can put your money into the next one and the next one and the next one. And it's always about the next five to 10 deals than it is to how much am I going to make on this one deal? And I would much, please, I would love the opportunity to give you more equity in this deal for you bringing more to the table. It makes it easier for everybody. Total win-win right there. Like, uh, you know, thinking of everybody's highest and best interest. Look, these the property manager is now an owner of a property they're managing. What what kind of job do you think they're going to do on that property? Like, the you think best. they're going to be more dedicated? Like, absolutely. Um, they're going to, they're going to treat it like their own. Cause it is their own. That's, mm -hmm. that's brilliant. Good stuff. Awesome. Um, we're starting to bump up against time here, Tim. We're going to, I'm going to kind of bring this full circle and, um, I'm, you know, I'm going to ask you, uh, you know, right now, um, for people getting in, you, you, you coach a lot of, uh, newbies, people that are trying to get their first deal done or have gotten their first deal done and are scaling up. Um, you know, and you talk to these guys every week and you have your coaching group, um, you know, what, what are you telling them? Like, what's your, what's the overall kind of gist of your messaging to, uh, folks that, that are looking to level up and, and everybody on the show, everybody, all the listeners are looking to level up. What, from, from your perspective, somebody that's leveling up quick, like right now you hold the keys, like you, you are, you're doing what everybody wants to do um, that gets into this space. So what words of wisdom from your perspective do you have for folks? Man, I just, I, I, f I feel like everything that we talked about on this call, on this, on this interview is exactly the way that we talk with our students. And 
the biggest, like you, you have to 20 X yourself before you can 10 X, whatever you want in your business or your personal life. Like, you know, you have to change inter- internally first. And we talk a lot about mindset and, and yeah. strategically thinking. And obviously I, I hope you can tell from this interview alone that the mindset that I have is a little bit, I don't want to say it's different than most, uh, than a lot of people, but like, I have the same mindset of the very, very, very successful people. And if I can help transfer a little bit of my mindset into your mindset and help you break your limiting beliefs, you can have the keys too. You can literally do anything you want in this world if you break your own limiting beliefs. And people get stuck. They get stuck. They get stuck in fear. They get stuck in inaction because they don't understand why. And if I can help explain to you why to help you progress and move forward, then I feel fulfilled because I helped you and I impacted your life in in a positive way. So I don't have any secret sauce. There is no secret sauce to real estate. It's been around before you and I both, right? At the same time. So it's like, what I'm not replicate. I'm just replicating. I'm not doing anything that's above, above and beyond or normal or like whatever. Right? There's no, there's no secret sauce there. So it's just understanding yourself and how to connect yourself with other people. I like to use the analogy of a puzzle. Right? There's millions and millions and biz- millions of of puzzles out there, like a giant picture. But you are just an individual puzzle piece, and you need to go out and build the relationships where you can be the puzzle piece that connects everybody and finishes that beautiful puzzle, right? Yeah. And when once you find those people that you connect with, right? Because like uh, you know, people that help you with your weaknesses and you help other people with your superpowers, you mm-hmm. can be unstoppable. And if you right. can just be a go giver and bring everybody along for the ride and not be greedy and look at the future five, 10 years forward instead of right now, right today on this specific deal, then I promise you you are gonna be you're gonna far far more achieve anything that you thought you were gonna be able to do if you work mm-hmm. together with a group and you have a group mentality where you can provide value to the group with no expectation of return and just want to want to genuinely grow and help mm-hmm. people and like, you know, just, just be a genuine person at the end of the day. Yeah. So well said uh, It's just, dude, this has been gold, like really, really good stuff. Um, great takeaways, great action steps, um, great mindset stuff. Like really listeners go back and listen to this again. Like seriously, like, you know, when you listen to something twice, it really makes it concrete in your head. And there's so much rich stuff here, um, to, you know, to take away. So I highly recommend that Tim, dude, this has been great. Uh, really appreciate you being on the show and, uh, we, you know, we're fans here. We, we, we're, we want to see you succeed. So let us know how we can serve. Um, and you know, I sh- sure wish you all the best and can't wait to see what you do next. Thanks, man. I really appreciate the time and, and the invite to be on the show. It means a lot to me. Yeah, you bet. You bet. Listeners, thanks for listening to another episode of the Apartment Gurus podcast, and we will see you on the next one. Take care, everybody. This has been the Apartment Gurus with Tate Seymour. If you enjoyed this episode, be sure to subscribe and leave a rating and review on your favorite podcast platform. To contact Tate, go to www.investwithgreenlight.com for access to his investor portal and Calendly link. He loves to hear from you and thanks you for being a valued listener. Just a reminder that you are the guru. See you on the next episode of The Apartment Gurus.